Greetings, my friends. Please make certain that you are still subscribed to this channel because every day I'm hearing from other people that they have been unsubscribed without their knowledge by YouTube. And if you are not subscribed, please consider supporting this channel. We need you. Thank you. <laughs> this past Sunday, we witnessed two tragic landmark events. The self-immolation of the BBC and the death of one of the longest-running shows in history, Doctor Who. Doctor Who is not only dead, it is defiled, and therein lies the horrible tragedy. Death comes to all things. All things must pass, as George Harrison said before he himself passed. But a death becomes horrible beyond imagining when that death is so ugly it forever taints your memory of the life that was lived. Case in point, the ritual murder and sodomization of Doctor Who titled The Timeless Children. Watching this final installment of Doctor Who's execrable 12 series was like hearing from your dying father on his deathbed that he has a whole bunch of children buried in the backyard behind the shed. That is not hyperbole. It is literally and exactly that. In this act of character assassination designed as a metaphor for what I can only assume is a profound hatred and loathing for Western civilization, we learn that the much fabled Time Lords of Gallifrey gained their powers of regeneration by stealing them from a timeless child. A foundling that wasn't even of their race. A child that the first Time Lord murdered over and over and over again over the course of at least eight to ten years. Until she understood the child's power of regeneration and was able to steal it for herself and her order of Time Lords. So yes, Doctor Who was murdered by Chris Chibnall, a feckless assassin posing as a writer who killed the show in such a way that no one who has been watching this slanderous drivel and takes it seriously will ever be able to look at it the same way again. Why is it that serious? Consider the analogy. Once your dying father confesses to being a child murderer the entire time that you knew him, that not only renders him loathsome to you in his final moments on his deathbed, but it also reaches back in time and turns all your memories of him into something monstrous and loathsome. Every moment you spend with him was a lie, and suddenly you're questioning every single occasion, every exchange, every glance he ever threw your way when you were a child. Much worse than death, such a hideous deathbed realization forever changes your life. So it is with Doctor Who. Thanks to the contemptible cultural vandal Chris Chibnall, the man who killed Doctor Who. The story is this. Tecteun is the first space traveler of Gallifrey. She heads out into space and stumbles across a child abandoned in front of a portal to another universe. Takteun rescues the child and adopts her, but one day the child is playing on a cliff with a little boy, and as they fight over a toy, the little girl falls off the cliff and dies. But then, much to Takteun's surprise, the little girl comes back to life, transforming into another little girl. And that's when Tecteun, in a stunning and brave choice, pulls a mighty spark, switches from being the first space explorer to the bestest scientist ever, straps the kid to a table, and proceeds to murder it over and over and over again over the next eight or ten years until she understands the regeneration process and steals it. She then injects herself with a stolen regeneration property and becomes the first Time Lord. She then uses it on others, creating an elite order of Time Lords, setting up the citadel of the Time Lords on the continent of Wild Endeavor in the mountains of Solitude and Solace. Oh, 
And that little girl the Time Lords repeatedly murdered to steal her power was, of course, the Doctor. And the Time Lords also founded a secret order we've never heard of before, called the Division. And this secret order despicably wiped the knowledge of these multiple homicides and this theft from the Doctor's memory, leading her to think that William Hartnell was her first incarnation. Which he was. And all the bullshit this season about what's her name, the so-called first doctor, who I don't give a flying fuck about, all of that is nonsense and lies from an aggrieved piece of shit who evidently despises most of the Doctor Who viewing audience, along with Western civilization as we know it, which he is seemingly attempting to rewrite. That so-called doctor, this so-called season, and this so-called creative have all the validity of a bowl of plastic fruit stuck in the grocer's produce section for a laugh. Consume it at your peril. I'm not even going to talk about that particular fraud. There are bigger plastic fish to fry here. In short, this is the phony who the Chibnall is trying to ram down our throats. This is nothing less than a deconstruction of Western civilization and an attempt to topple the so-called patriarchy with this bit of pretentious nastiness. Because make no mistake, this is a metaphor for our history and culture and essentially by way of parable, Chibnall is saying that we are the Time Lords. But in the process of making this little political diatribe, he has irrevocably soiled, slandered, and slimed Doctor Who forever. To what end? To shame us all. Consider the hidden messages in this reviled revision. The timeless child that Tek Teun finds is a little black girl. Tek Teun is a white woman. The entire basis of the Time Lord civilization, therefore, is cultural appropriation of an exploited person of color. Chibnall makes the point that the Time Lords are the elite, and therefore the civilization of the elite is misappropriated from an exploited person of color. Indeed, when the timeless child who will eventually become the Doctor falls off the cliff, she transforms from a black girl into an Asian girl. So regardless of the exploitation involved, it is entirely women who are responsible for the founding of the Time Lords. Not only was the Doctor originally a girl, but the creator of the Time Lords was as well. Take that, patriarchy! The only bad apple was, of course, the white woman, who repeatedly murders the poor child in order to exploit her labor and build her civilization on cultural misappropriation. But wait, there's even more agenda here. Where do men fit in? Well, the reason that the timeless child falls off the cliff in the first place is she's fighting over a toy with a little boy. The little boy is trying to take a toy away from her. That toy is a spaceship. So metaphorically, the little boy is attempting to steal the little girl's future for the patriarchy. As a result of this theft, the little girl dies and enters the cycle of murder and regeneration that creates the Time Lords. I don't care what you think about the politics behind this, that's not the point. The point is, is it worth it to ruin a timeless classic like Doctor Who to shove your political tisk tisking down our throats? The BBC apparently thinks it is worth it. And that's why Doctor Who is dead. Ah, oh, isn't this lovely? Don't you feel inspired by this political lecture masquerading as entertainment? This nastiness is not only a lecture, it's a revision. A revision designed to reach back in time, all the way back to the beginning of Doctor Who, to soil and desecrate this venerable franchise because, well, it's part of the patriarchy, isn't it? It made people happy, the wrong kind of people. And so we need to go ahead and savagely rip it limb from limb to shame the audience. That audience of privileged and elite gatekeepers who, much like the Time Lords themselves, deserve nothing but scorn and censure. 
What a hideous way to take what was a fun and innocent children's show from the 60s and turn it into a hateful, nasty, dreary piece of shit. Welcome to the BBC. Welcome to the new face of Doctor Who. I can't emphasize this enough, people. Understand what has really happened here. Doctor Who has had its guts removed and its organs placed in sacrificial jars, sacrificed on the altar of woke, gutted and flayed open so that everything entertaining could be extracted, leaving only the ugly remains as an object lesson to those in the audience. Everything you believed before, everything that gave you joy, was hideous at its core. Here, look at this mutilated corpse. This is what we think of you and your fucking Doctor Who. Suck on that, you self-entitled oppressors. This is how we see you. This is how we want you to see yourselves. Remember when Doctor Who used to be fun? Remember when Doctor Who was a joyful romp through a universe of wonder? A universe of possibilities? It didn't always make sense. It wasn't always consistent. But one thing it never was, was hateful. Doctor Who was never hateful to itself or to its viewers. There was danger, there was loss, but there was also fun. And fun is something that Chibnall has no idea how to create. Pedantic propaganda designed to punish and pummel is antithetical to fun. And that's what we got this season. Don't despair. All of this is a lie told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. This is not canon. This is not Doctor Who. Stop watching it, ignore it, expel it from your lives. But I am urging one thing. If you live in the UK, cancel your TV license and stop watching. Just stop watching. Cancel your TV license even if it's only for a month. Cancel your TV license and write to the BBC explaining you don't appreciate having your past raped by a piece of shit who values his own ego more than 50 fucking years of lore from one of the greatest television series of all time. Cancel your TV license and tell the BBC they can take their social experiment and shove it. I mean, who needs a TV anymore? Watch things on your computer. Watch things online. Watch things made by people that respect you and your right to think for yourself. I don't live in the UK, so there's not a lot I can do. But know this, without respect, we reject. If you don't demand respect, how can you expect them to give it? And do you really want to pay money to allow the BBC to come into your living room and spit in your face? I have a lot more to say about this debacle. The plot holes in this thing are enormous. But there's too much to say for one review. I will break down these points into multiple videos, but know this. They murdered Doctor Who on Sunday in such a way as to defile even our good memories of it. Thus, they have reached into your minds and ripped your memories apart. Are you going to forgive this violation? Given the plummeting ratings, the BBC is already paying a price for their disdain, their arrogance, their hubris. I say, they haven't paid enough. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. Ha 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 